Hello, Ames Traders. Happy Saturday, wherever you are. And we are going to do a market recap. Welcome to our market recap of the week of June 19th through the 23rd. So we're going through, we're just going through the one hour. Just this is our back tested, four tested cornerstone strategy. Just going trading the banana indicator on the one hour chart. So a lot of us trade, you know, I trade the one hour and the M15 and the M5, but we just want to go through the one hour just for a simple market recap. We're going to start with the Great British Pound and the US dollar, Forex pair on the one hour charts. Back on the 19th, so here was the June 19th, not much happened there. Uh, no no signal until here. And we wouldn't have taken this one. It's just too big. The, the bar is too big for us to take. It was a nice impulse move. It broke the 50 EMA. Um, so if you would have taken it, I wouldn't have blamed you. But at the same time, I would have said, you know what? You could have filtered that one because the bar is really big. So skip that one. And then these wouldn't have been triggered. You know, our stops would have been... You know, our orders wouldn't have been triggered there. Uh, nothing here. Same here. You know, we got a signal here. None of those would have been triggered. And that would have been, you know, in the middle of the night. No, 5 p.m. Sorry, in the middle of the night for the European session. So no one would have been, you know, 5 p.m. I'm out of the market. Europe would have been middle of the night. No one would have taken that one. Here. And even so, you know, if you want to try to take, like, this next one coming up here. We got this area up here. And is the market trending? You know, you ask yourself, you see all these right here. And you ask yourself, is the market trending? Because we're, we're, that would have been a buy. You know, so we would try to, we would think, oh, maybe it's going to go back up and retest this re resistance area here. But is the market trending up? No, not really. It's not, it's not trending at all. It's going sideways. You can see all the, you know, all the EMAs are kind of together. You know, the bigger trend it was just sideways. So no, skip all those. Filter all of those. We're not trending. Same with these two. That was those when they got triggered anyway. Those orders would have been triggered. Here, same thing. Seed entry. That was that would that could have been a nice one, but the order was not triggered. Same here. So nothing. A big nothing on the great British British pound this week. But that's okay because some weeks are going to be like that. On especially on the hourly, there won't be some moves on the hourly. Uh, for some weeks, especially in the Great British Crown, hasn't been given many entries at all these past months, I would say, uh, or month at least. So anyway, but onto the Euro, Euro USD on the hourly chart, starting at the 19th, nothing, nothing, uh, until the 20th, we got this, again, that's way too big, there was kind of a, you know, a little, little resistance area there, right in front of it, so, no, nah, that's a no, that, that bar is way too big, and... Um, we had that one, but that's on the wrong side of the 50 EMA. See, we got there was a big impulse move there and all with the seed entry, but we're on the wrong side of the 50 EMA. Now, if you've been trading for a long time, you can, you know, you don't, you don't, you may not take into account the 50 EMA, but for if you're a beginner or if you've just been trading this banana strategy for a few months, you never want to trade on the wrong side of the EMA. So, you know, the trend for the 50 EMA is, is up. So you only want to take longs. So this one was on above the 50 EMA, but it was a sell signal. So we wouldn't take that. So, and then we got this breakout impulse move. Boom. Right there for me. That would have been 11 a.m. Prime time for me in the U.S. So, um, or the entry would have happened at noon. Um, which then you guys in London, it would be 6 p.m. So... I know a lot of our traders that are in London or in the in the UK still trade it <laughs> within the evening hours into 6 p.m. because you know that that's the the U.S. session still open and you know a lot of moves happen during the U.S. session. So a lot of you guys I know would have still taken this one there. Again, this one is kind of a you know it's a bit too big, but because of, there was a breakout and you know there was a big impulse move here with this you know pushed up real hard, big you know wicks on on those two candles beforehand, slammed up. Looks like that was probably news, but it did break out of the area, and you know it was a couple hours so that we would have entered a couple hours after news. We don't want to enter, you know, on a news bar, but a couple hours after news could have got in there, and then went up to four R. So as we as the market hit four R, we moved the stop loss to two R. So that would have been at least a two R for us. So in case you didn't know, love you guys already know this, but just to reiterate. Uh, whenever it gets the market gets to two R, we always we always move our stop to break even, 
or you can take 50% off depending on what you're comfortable with. Now, for all beginners, I would just say just move your stuff to break even. Leave it, leave the full amount on there and just move your stop to break even when you when it gets the market gets to 2r if you've just now if you're just now starting to do the banana strategy or you've only been doing it a few months so and then as it goes up we use a trailing stop so when it hit 3r we move it would move the stop loss to 1r and then when it hit 4r move the stop loss to 2r so then after it hit 4r would have came back and got got us out at 2R. So that would be, hey, we're up 2R for the month. Now, look at this one. This one was glorious. So but I couldn't have taken this one in the U.S. because it would have been, the entry would have happened at midnight. So I would not be watching the market. But all you guys in Europe could have nailed this one. It would have been 6, 6 a.m. in London, 7 a.m. in Frankfurt. And that's a solid, because it just closed, you know, on the other side of the 50 EMA. Got a little little impulse move here. One, two, three bars with the seed on the third bar. And then boom, looks like that was probably news. But when you're in a trade and you got news coming up, you move that. If you're positive, you move that stop loss to break even. If you're break even or negative, go ahead and just get out of the trade. Don't don't wait and see, you know, what's gonna happen with the news. Just go ahead and get out of the trade. So this one, if we would have got it here on this bar. After this, yeah, after this bar gave us a signal, then we enter on the next bar. We would have been about at 1R or 2R. We might have been a break even already at the end of, you know, after this bar closed, it looks like. We would have been a break even already because it would have hit 2R. Or if not, we would have go ahead and we would have gone ahead and moved it to break even because we know that news is coming up. Um so this one would have been positive. We would have moved us up to break even. Doesn't mean we still might not have taken a loss because with news, we know we get slippage. You still could have taken a loss, but you would have minimized it. So, in this case, we would have won. We would have got five R. <laughs> I mean, not me. I would have been asleep. But you guys in Europe, if you, you know, if you're in Aust if you're in India, Australia would have been what? So if it, the entry would have been midnight here, Australia is. I'm in Central U.S. time, so I'm in Texas. So Australia is 15 hours ahead. So that would have been about 3 p.m. in Australia. Could have could have got that one for sure. And so, and so that would have been, and if you're in Europe or Australia, you guys are already got seven R for the week. Uh, yeah, so any of, anywhere in the Eastern hemisphere, it's possible to have been seven R this week so far, just on the Euro. Uh, for me and the U S traders, I'd only been about two R. So let's move on to the USD Japanese yen. So this one was an interesting market. So we got on the 19th starting here, nothing really here. I mean, these wouldn't have been. Looking at this one, I mean, I was this one right here. That would have been a rent if you had entered, but I mean, there's a little resistance area right here. So you could have filtered that one. I would say filter that one, which is, you know, we got our four for the banana indicator. There's four rules, two filters. If you don't know what they are, you got to take the course. You should take the course if you want a full in-depth tutorial on, you know, how we trade the banana. So, but for those of you that already trade the banana knows what the four rules and two filters are. We know we probably wouldn't take this one because you know there's a resistance area right here, and there's no space. You know, I I still take it if there's a resistance area in the way. If you have at least two R until that area, this one you know there's not even one R, and you're already at the area. So this is definitely a no. And you know even this, what's the impulse move? That's number you know that's number one. There's got to be a. a this looks like a continuation of the overall trend up, yes. But the impulse move, what, these three bars? Eh, this, is, this is not really how we like to take the banana trades or seed, seed entries. Um, so that's why I skip. It doesn't follow the rules for me. But this one, this one over here, I found very interesting. We got a channel, right? Everyone can see the channel dr I drew, that's drawn here. And this, we have a hard breakout of the channel. Look at that bar. There is no wicks on either side of that bar. That is a very strong breakout. I would, that's what I call my impulse move. Now, if this was just random other kind of bar, like kind of similar to this one, this bar over here, you know, I would say no. But because this bar broke out of a channel, so it's a breakout, and with the overall, back in the overall direction of the broader market, which is, you know, going up. And then it gave a little pullback. 
And see, I wouldn't have entered here because this you could have entered here. It's not against the rules to enter here. But I'd want to wait until the 10 EMA crosses the 20 EMA. That's not part of the banana rules, but it is a guideline. So I would have waited until the 10 EMA crossed 20 EMA, which would have been right at the bar that we wanted to enter on. So we end. I like this even better because, you know, the seed entry is smaller. So we got a smaller uh, distance to go until we hit, hit 5R. So that would have been the better entry for me just because, you know, we waited until we wouldn't have known that the bar would have been smaller, of course, till after it finished. But it's a better entry for me because the 10 EMA had crossed the 20 EMA. So this that's why I would I would have waited to hear if you would have taken this taken this one. So if you would have waited for that, waited for the 10 to 10 EMA to cross the 20, you would have got five R. Boom. But for me, what for me, no, it would have been eleven. <laughs> see, I got my local time on here. I don't know if you can see it. I got a, you know, local time indicator on there. So to help help me with these, help me with these breakdowns for everybody all over the world. So my time would have been 11 p.m. I wouldn't have entered that one. But once again, uh, so the entry happened at midnight for me. So that's 6 a.m. in London, 7 a.m. in Frankfurt, uh, you know, in the afternoon in India, and um, the afternoon in Australia. So you guys, are, you know, or late morning maybe in India, I'm not sure. But um, so you guys in the Eastern Hemisphere could have grabbed another 5R. So you guys would have been up what 12 r already and if you our standard risk that we say everyone should start with is one percent risk one percent per trade that's you no know, that's the maximum and that's where everyone should start so now if you feel more comfortable some, some other some of our traders will trade half percent per trade or they'll risk a half percent they'll risk a quarter of a percent but it's our standard suggestion our standard you know, to do one risk one percent for each trade. So imagine if you're in your if you're in the Eastern Hemisphere, you know you could have already been up twelve percent this so far um, this week. So with just these three pairs, uh, but for me, like a U.S. guy, as you saw I would have only got two R so far. So up two percent so far so far for the U.S. traders uh, for this week. Uh, so then we go to the German Zax. German forty of the German Zax. We take a look. Start on the nineteenth, which is right here. Wouldn't have taken any of these. They are on the wrong side of the 50 EMA. So wouldn't have taken those, although this one would have been great. Would have worked out. But, you know, that's against the rules. No, actually, it's not against the rules. Sorry. It's not against the rules. It is for me, personally. I don't usually take trades that are on the wrong side of the 50 EMA. But that's not one of the banana rules. So you could have taken that one if you're a more advanced trader. Um, but if you're just, just not starting out on the banana, haven't been trading it for too long. And you know, myself, I don't like to trade it on this side of the 50 EMA. So it's not against the rules, but it's not advised for beginners. So I didn't mark that one, even though it would have worked out. I didn't mark it as a, would have worked out for five R easily. I didn't mark it as a, as a winner. Cause it's just on the wrong side of the 50 EMA and not beginner shouldn't be doing that. Um, or even, you know, I don't like doing that either. So let's see these. What time would that would have been? Noon for me. Got a little. Oh yes, this one I sure I almost counted this one too. Uh, again, that would have worked out. That would have been another great one, but I didn't count it because we have a trend candle back up. We have we got a nice little impulse move. It's on the other side of the fifty EMA, but this trend candle right here, this trend candle pullback, it's a bigger candle than the last one pulling back. So that's an indication that it might you know, continue up, at least bounce off the 50 EMA before it continues down, you know? So we, that's one of the, another one of our rules with a banana indicator. Again, if you want to know them all, list it out, take the course, come and take the course, or you can join our discord and people are very willing to share in the discord what the banana rules are, what the filters are, join our free discord and see these trades in action, you know, in real time as people are posting their trades daily. So, this one I say broke the rules because there was a trend candle in the opposite direction for the pullback. We want to see we don't want to see, you know, trend candles bigger than the impulse candles, you know. So so that's why even though again this one would have worked out, I didn't count it. Because I would say that's against the rules. So now we go through here. We got this one. 
wouldn't have been filled. These two wouldn't have been filled. No, so that, you know, those wouldn't have been triggered. Then we got this one in here. We got a rinse. We got a nice impulse move. We got a seed entry, and it wouldn't have worked out. Would have hit our stop. So that would have been a minus one, and that's a noon. I could have traded that. Europe could have traded that. Australia, you know, that would have been the morning, 3 a.m. for you guys. So that would have been a no for Australia, but that would have been a minus one for me. So I'd be up, I'd be up only one R in the U.S., but you guys in Europe would still be up like 11 R. Uh, and this one right here. So this is another one that I couldn't have taken in the U.S., but you guys, the entry happened at 6 a.m. London time, 7 a.m. Frankfurt. Frankfurt, uh, Australia could have nailed it. Another 5R. Another 5R already for the German Zacks. So for me, I couldn't have got it in the U.S. But you guys in Europe and India, Australia, and the Eastern Hemisphere, y'all are doing real good so far. Uh, that, so that would have been like, you went up 16R if you're in Europe. Uh, maybe Australia too. Um for me, I would still only be up one hour. If I was just trading the one hour. Again, I don't just trade the one hour. I also trade the 15 minute, the 15 minute and the five minute with the banana strategy. But we're not going over that in this video. Just want to stick with the one hour for this market recap. And so now let's look at the Dow, the US 30 or the Dow. So nothing here because we're, you know, those wouldn't have been triggered. I, may, I think maybe this one would have been triggered, but it's on the wrong side of the 50 EMA. So that we don't count it. We're not going to take that. Um... That's in the middle of the night. No, no, that's... Well, that's 6 p.m. No, I would not be trading at 6 p.m. It's middle of the night for Europe. No one's really going to take that. Maybe Australia. I don't know. I think that would have been, what, six, 9 a.m. in Australia. So maybe. Maybe Australia could have taken that one. But right at these open and closes, you know, I'm not going to count those that are right on the open and close, you know, of the market. I mean, even though, again, this is another one that even though it would have worked out or at least worked out for... Not for 5R, but let's see, we probably would have got a break even or looks like it would have gone to 2R and then probably would have came back to break even is what it looks like. Mm hmm So that would have got gone to 2R. We would move our stuff to break even and we got a break even. So that would have been a break even anyway, if you happen to be in Australia and taking that one. Uh, but no, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's on the wrong side of the 50 EMA, isn't it? So no, of course not. We wouldn't have taken that one. None of these. None of these. These are a bit more interesting. They're on the right side of the 50 EMA. But do we really have an impulse move before these two? Not really. What are these What are these three bars? The impulse move is maybe, if it's anything, it's way back here. And that was, you know, the day before. So, or the session before. So, that's a no. We wouldn't take these two. There's not really an impulse move before. So, that, those, the, those would be a no. That one, we wouldn't take this one right here. Because it's after a climactic move. Now, this is an impulse move that's too big. You know, the rubber band principle, market stretches, and then you, then you let go of the rubber band, snap, snaps back. And that's exactly what happened. Stretched, snapped back. That's why we wouldn't take this one because we can see that's, you know, compared to all these other bars, these bars are really big. It's probably a news that day. So we would have stayed away from that one because that, that goes against one of the banana rules. So if you... you know, to find out what those are, come join us in the course. So, um, another one right here. This goes against one of the filters. There's a support area. So, we wouldn't have taken that one. So, even though that one would have worked out for some R's, we wouldn't have taken it. Because it probably would have been one R, I think. One went to three R and then came back and got hit our stop at that would have been sitting at one R. Um, even though it would have, again, even though it would have worked we would have filtered it out because of this little little resistance area there. So continue on. There was nothing in the Dow. And these two, the, the orders wouldn't have been triggered. Uh, so there's nothing in the Dow this week, nothing in the U.S. 30 this week. Now let's take a look at the NASDAQ, our last one for this recap. This recap is going kind of long. Thanks for hanging with me, guys. Um, so nothing. Those are on the wrong side of 50 EMA, all these. This one was interesting, but the order wouldn't have been triggered. So nothing there. Same here. Order not triggered. Interesting, but uh, kind of big, you know. But still, order wouldn't have been triggered. So then we get down here. Order's not triggered on those two. Take a look at this one. So now this one is a nice one. I mean, it's not, you know, we got a little, we got an impulse move that came from the session before, but it was, it did continue. I mean, it's not the prettiest banana entry, but it doesn't break any of the rules. 
And so we would have entered at the, on here for me that uh, again, again, for me, that would have been midnight. So 6 a.m. for you guys in London. So uh, I wouldn't have taken that one once again. <laughs> so but you guys would have, would have got the 3R stop loss hit at 1R. That would have been another 1R for you guys in Europe, uh, India or Australia. So. The, the least, and then that's it. Then we're at, and that's the last market we go over for the day. So again, some of our traders trade more markets. Some of our traders trade oil, U.S. oil, U.S. gold. I, I, I look at, I watch those markets myself as well. Uh, but this is just our benchmark strategy with these six markets with on the one hour. This is, you know, our bread and butter. And this is what we recommend for all the new traders starting out. It's the most stress free way to do it. The, you know, less markets. One time frame on the hourly, you know, 15 minute and the five minute, they're a little more heck, you know, you got to watch it a lot more closely. So the most stress free way of doing it is on the one hour with fewer markets. And if you were in Europe or Asia, Australia, you could have, you know, about 16%. So let's count it up. So for me, I would just got this two R. So that's two, five. So that's seven plus another five, 12 minus one, 11 plus five, 16. And then there wasn't nothing in the Dow. And then one more, 17 R. If you would have been in Europe, India, Australia, you definitely could have got Europe. You could have got all those really Eastern Europe, London, UK would be kind of hard. A lot of those, lot of those entries happened at 6 a.m. But Frankfurt, 7 a.m. further east, going further east than that. You could have got all these. Uh, so me in the U.S., I would have just gotten one, a plus one and a minus one. I would have just got one R, one, which again, one R would have been a 1% increase in the, in the total account. So 1% a week is pretty, pretty good, depending on how big your account is. I mean, anyone that's been trading for you know, a long, good amount of time knows that any increase is great. And especially 1% is very good for the week. But that's just for me in the U.S. And again, I did have personally me. I had 4.5 R increase this week, but I was also trading the M15 and M5. I'm not going to go over my personal trades because they're on the M15. They're on the M15 and M5. If you guys want to see my personal trades, then maybe you know that can that can be a different video. Let me know. I'll upload it in a different market recap video. I can just do a market recap of stuff I did. Uh, that will be a different video series. But for just a regular market recap, aim stress. Aim stress-free trading strategy. This is it. You could have nabbed in the in the Eastern Hemisphere. You could have nabbed 17 R, 17 percent increase. Pretty incredible. Uh, so that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. If you want to see more videos like this, or you know what you want to see in the future. So let me know what you thought of the video. Like and comment and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.